Yo, what's going on guys? JBH here and welcome back to another brand new series. Today, we're going to be checking out the brand new MotoGP 18 game. This is the official video game of the MotoGP World Championship and in this series, we're going to be playing through the career mode. So, pretty much the goal is we're going to be trying to race through the series or serieses of the MotoGP World Championship starting out in the Red Bull Rookies Cup and hopefully winning the MotoGP World Championship within five seasons. So it's a long road ahead. So I did play through some of just the quick mode stuff earlier on just to get a little bit of a feel for the game and try and make sure all my settings were right before I started this series. And I must admit there are quite a lot of ups but there are quite a lot of downs as well. So I'll take you through them here in a sec. Before we get into this series I also just want to point out that I am going to be racing 50% race distances, so it's going to be quite a long race, although I am going to be just highlighting the races as we go along, so I'm not going to be, of course, uploading the full 50% race distance or else we'll be here for three years. So, I'm going to be taking the highlights and then trying to really upload three races per episode, but today we're just going to be doing one race and I think it's at Hareth to start the season off. So, full weekend, although of course I'm just going to be uploading the race. Extreme difficulty, so we're going to be maxing it out. And then bike damage is off, tire wear is on. Actually, no, that should be realistic. Alright, tire wear is on. Manual start management means we have to use the clutch. And then of course the official rules, we can't actually change that. Physics is going to be on pro. Besides, I do like to have the auto tuck in on because I hate holding the button on down the straight. Uh, gears are all on manual. And of course, no rewinds and no restarts. I don't believe in that sort of stuff. So we'll be racing in it, at, well, racing it as it is in real life. So reputation and transfer windows. Pretty much that means that you have to get good results to sort of up your rep, up, up your reputation, <laughs> and then get new offers from new teams in new category or in higher categories. And then of course, uh, the transfer window means you're only allowed to change teams at certain points in the season. So that is sort of like the previous MotoGP games in the past. All these new features, so we've got emails, and then the calendar there, standings, my career, this little stats menu there. Now there is this uh, actual full-on sort of level program for your riders sort of throttle management and riding position and whatnot. I'm not sure if that actually increases your pace or whether it just is like a level thing, sort of like in Call of Duty with your levels of prestige and whatnot. So rider customization, of course we've got that. Riding style, balanced. Now I have already all preset this so that I didn't have to go through it in this video. Of course choosing my helmet, gloves and boots there. All right, so without any further ado, we'll jump straight out on the track and see what this new game is like. So here we are, MotoGP 18. Now this is all looking pretty cool, I must admit. The rider sort of walk out and all the sort of way you can interact with your crew members and whatnot. So main menu of the race sort of screen I guess you could say. Bike settings. Now the setup of course in the rookies you can only uh, adjust the suspension which is a bit unfortunate but for the most part it is all looking fairly similar to MotoGP 17. Uh, what else have we got here? Weekend results. Of course, we're in the first practice session. One thing I do like is that you've actually got FP2 and FP3 this year. You don't actually have to get it all done in one practice session like on MotoGP 17. Qualifying, warm-up, race, all the same as last year. Options. Now, you can change the controls. Of course, I'm using a controller, so that should be like that. Uh, HUD. Now nice little options in the HUD menu, pretty much the same as last year. If you want to see anything, just pause on it. Um, I'm using a GTX 1080, of course, on this PC. I am playing on the PC, I probably should have mentioned that before. Uh, so I can have it all maxed out. So we're going to see what the full capabilities of the graphics are on this game, which is always nice, playing on a PC rather than a console. Alright, rules. Yeah, don't need to see that, I already know the rules. Alright, so now that we get to finally get out on track. The mechanics are taking the bike out of the pit and the rider is getting ready to get on. Let's see if some interesting information comes from the configuration chosen for the next lap. So, new commentary this year. Alright, leaving the pits. Now, this is one of the biggest things that I'm not happy about. Most people it wouldn't really affect, but the 
first person view or the rider view or in other games it's called the cockpit view although I guess you can't really call it a cockpit view in a MotoGP game is completely screwed this well it's not screwed I mean they've tried to make it realistic but it's I can't whoop some of it I cannot ride with this I don't know what this sort of gyro thing that they've got going on but it's just so ridiculously hard to know where the bike is underneath you with the camera sort of rolling back and forth like this so unfortunately for someone like me that likes to use the cockpit view I, can, I just cannot ride using this view this year so unfortunately we're gonna have to switch to the good old third person view and for the most part all the physics and stuff seem pretty cool I mean again it's hard to compare MotoGP 17 with 18 right now because I didn't actually ride in the Red Bull Rookies Cup on MotoGP 17 so it's quite hard to have a direct comparison. One thing I will say for sure is the the rear brake which of course most people and myself will use as a button well everyone would have to use that as a button to be honest I can't see how you would be able to have a trigger or an extra trigger on your controller to use as a handbrake uh, handbrake as a rear brake so one thing this year the rear brake is really really like touchy you cannot lean on it like you can in the previous games I felt like I could hold it quite a lot longer in MotoGP 17 than what I can now As we get to this uh, Lorenzo hairpin I'll give you an idea we are at Jerez in Spain so if I hold the rear brake on you see it just completely locks the rears so you really can only just touch it I used to quite like using the rear brake just to set the bike going into the corner on MotoGP 17 and unfortunately you can't quite do that but besides that the physics feels quite nice there was this massive issue on MotoGP 17 that was sort of realistic where if you got your tyres on the inside of a kerb sort of like try to do it here sort of like this and you come back on it would make the bike low side but it seems that on MotoGP 18 uh, you can't quite low side it which is sort of more unrealistic but it is quite nice to be able to make a small mistake and not be punished for it as it is just so hard to control a bike with a controller I mean if you ever if anyone out there has ever played like F1 2017 or any of the F1 games or Project Cars 2 or Gran Turismo playing with a controller versus playing with a steering wheel I mean it's no comparison so just imagine what it, how much easier it would be like if you had like a full bike set up or handlebars set up but unfortunately bike or motorbike racing being the way it is and the way you have to use your body and that and, and all like that I should say is uh well it's not gonna happen anytime soon unless you have some million dollar setup so we're gonna jump through into the qualifying session now well I am I'm gonna of course skip over it in the recording we'll skip to the race and now we'll see how we go in this first sort of race weekend on MotoGP 18 of course I am learning this is the first time that I played this game I did do a little bit of testing before but as race wise it's gonna be interesting hello and welcome to the Jerez de la Frontera circuit just a few more minutes to wait before the Spanish Grand Prix finally begins as you can tell from the footage we're broadcasting from the track we're looking forward to great weather for the race Alrighty guys, here we go. First race on MotoGP 18. Of course, starting out in the Red Bull Rookies Cup. We are now moving to the starting grid where engineers and, and technicians We are, are just about ready to get off and running. The race starts. So, in qualifying, we managed to qualify second by just 16 thousandths of a second. So, definitely chose the right difficulty, but it is very, very close and it's quite hard to get the lap right every, well, sort of lap for lap, but Without any further ado, we'll jump straight into this race. As you can see, we are starting off second. Now, I don't know anyone in this field. I don't actually follow the Red Bull Rookies Cup uh, in real life. But hopefully, we won't be in this category for too long. We can get straight up into the Moto3 and on the official sort of road to MotoGP. Just a few moments to go until the start of the Spanish Grand Prix. 
These riders know it will be vitally important to take the first curve perfectly. Alrighty, here we go. First race on MotoGP 18. And we're off. A bit wide, come on, we're off the cheese. Three wide already. Well, we have not had a good start. Oh, Jesus, apologies. Oh my god, turned in way too early. Come on, Joseph, get it together. I'm still getting used to this view, it's so different to what I'm used to. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> God, our reputation is going to be shit after this race. Oh, we're up into third, though, so... It's been a successful last two laps. Just got to try and not anger anyone else. Alrighty, halfway there. Running in third, see if we can go for a move here. Oh, let's just go back. Well, that didn't work. Oh, here we go, big move. Oh, you dick! Oh, <laughs> low sided after being cut off. Oh, my God, now it. After all that work... My elbow's out now. Ain't taking no prisoners anymore. We are going to the front. Alright, last lap. Barely made any ground on that lap. It wasn't too good, to be honest. Come on. Shit, got to go down one more gear there. Gotta get a good run off here. Come 
Come on. Pull. Ah, oh, shit. Come on. Oh, jeez. Can't really get your throttle happy here. Alright, so we'll get fourth. Unfortunately, we won't get that podium, but we'll still take fourth in race one. Unfortunately, yeah, just got low sided by the guy that uh, had no idea, well, the AI that had no idea we were on the inside, so obviously that hasn't changed. <laughs> Alright, up to level four already, cool. As the stars of this exciting race finish their final lap, Let's take advantage of these moments to take a look at the final rankings. All right, so nice little gains there, I suppose. 314 on the Today's reputation. Today's result was very positive, as you can tell from the mechanic's reaction in the pit. Of course, there's still a little more to go to make the podium, but they are definitely on the right path. Yeah, should have had a second, should definitely have actually had a win, but yeah, no, that was, a, that was a tough first race, but a fun first race. So, moving on to the next one. Just got to keep this form up, I suppose. So, positives out of MotoGP 18 so far. I do like the immersion. It's a lot more immersive than what it was last year. I do like the physics a little bit better, and of course, all the sort of uh, interactive pre-grid sort of features that they have on the game or well, not really interactive but immersive I should say is the right word but as far as it goes there is still a lot of things that they could improve on first of all for my like for my own sake I hate using the third person camera and they have completely ruined the first person sort of uh, brighter sort of face view or helmet cam view or cockpit view whatever you want to call it I just I don't know what they've done with it, but the whole gyro sort of thing. I know it's what they, they sort of tilt their head straight in real life to s sort of see level with the horizon, but it's impossible to really see what's going on and to sort of imagine where the bike is underneath you. Uh, I felt like it was fine on MotoGP 17. I don't know why they've changed it because I just felt it was unrideable. Second of all, one of the biggest negatives, it's not really so much of the game, but with the graphics, I don't know what they've done with the crowd, but the crowd honestly looks like something out of FIFA 98. I mean, the pre-race sort of race ritual things and whatnot that goes on, when you see the crowd cheering in the background, they're jumping up like they're freaking stick figures. So yeah, the three things I didn't like was the, the, the way the crowd looks, the, of course, the first person camera issue, and then I also need to figure out why this uh, rear brake button, well this rear button brake as I call it, is so touchy. I really need to sort of go and see if there's any sensitivity options for that because right now I basically can't use the rear brake. It's just too touchy and it just locks the rears completely, which is what a button should do. But I found in the last game uh, in MotoGP 17 I could actually use it. But anyway, thanks for tuning into this first episode. In episode two, we'll be continuing our run through the ranks and continuing our run in this MotoGP Rookie or Red Bull Rookies Cup as it's called Championship where hopefully we can get a win next time out and not get taken out. Alright guys, until next time, I'll catch you later.